the lecture notes earlier uh, or upload all the lecture notes first and then uh, so that they can go out and do printing. All right. Um, okay. I, I just want to let you know that um, actually I'm in the middle of uh, revising your lecture notes. All right. So um, if I were to upload them now, that would be the old version. Unless you do not mind the old version and then you do the changes along the way as I upload the new one. Uh, or uh, you rather wait uh, for the new one to be uploaded. Let me know your choice. What do you prefer? You prefer to receive the latest one straight away, uh, even though it's a bit late because I'm going to do it bit by bit. Um, because if you look at my um, exam questions, uh, um, they, are, they are actually changing <laughs> every time. <laughs> so in order to keep up uh, with the changes, so I actually revised my lecture notes uh, along the way as well. Uh, but you do not mind taking the old one and then you just modify uh, when the new one come along, uh, then I'm okay. Of course, uh, I think for those who want to do printing, that might be a bit of issue uh, because uh, you need to go out and print all the time. Okay. Um, Okay, let me see your comment. Nobody say anything. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, give the latest one. Okay, I have one person say give the latest one. Uh, the latest one, uh, I won't be able to give you all in one go. Uh, so I will give you only maybe one week before the next. Uh, the next, uh, what do you call that? Uh, upload the new one one week before the lecture takes place. <laughs> I want to poll. Oh, you all have a lot of uh, excitement from polling. Uh. Okay.
Okay, so I've given you two choices. So let me launch the poll. All right, so um, in the poll that I've just launched, I provide you two options. All right, uh, where I give you the old, old version of the lecture notes uh, all in one go, and then you all do the changes uh, as I teach them during lecture. Uh, you just compare what's the difference between your old one and my new one, and then you will make the changes accordingly. Lah. And the new one will be uh, the changes being done, um, but then the problem is uh, I can only upload them about one week before lecture. <laughs> so I guess as usual, we'll follow majority. Yeah? Okay, I have received uh, 37 votes so far. There are 50 of you currently attending the class. So please uh, quickly put in your vote and then uh, I can end it earlier and then I can move on uh, to our class today.
Okay, I'll let the poll run for another one minute. Can you quickly pass in your vote? Because uh, I can see we already have the majority. And uh, just give you one more minute and then I will end the poll. And for those who did not vote, then I will presume you um, you are okay with either one. Yeah, I should give you a third choice of okay with either arrangement. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to end the poll now. I have uh, 43 votes already. So the rest, I will take it as uh, you, you don't have uh, any opinion on this and you're okay with either arrangement, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to show you the poll's result. So out of uh, 44 votes that I received, uh, 41 votes, uh, prefer to receive the new ones with the changes done. All right, so, and this uh, will be uploaded one week before lecture. Okay, and then uh, only three prefer the old ones. Uh, then they, they would do the changes uh, during lecture. I think you all know yourself better than I knew you. Uh, actually, I, I, what I did uh, last time was the first one. Uh, I uploaded the old ones, and then uh, as I teach during lecture, I add in new materials, you know, add in new material, and then I change some of the same content. Uh, it, it turned out that uh, during exam, I found out that uh, students all didn't get the new ones that I put in <laughs> during lecture. So uh, I think that's why uh, I decided to actually straight away make the changes on the lecture notes before I give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's uh, start with our lecture, shall we? Or oh, anybody want to say something? No, ah? So we've decided that uh, I'm going to upload the new ones when it's available, only when it's available, yeah? So you uh, be a bit patient. Ah. And... Um, and then uh, I think the student who actually want me to upload everything because uh, they want to save the trouble of going out to do printing every week. Um, but what I can suggest uh, maybe is uh, you don't have to go out every week to do printing, but uh, you you write on the piece of paper first. Yeah, you write on a piece of paper first and then uh, you just print a few chapters in one go. Then you just fill in the blank or add in, just attach the, the sheets that you have written, you have uh, written information on to the notes that you have printed. Okay, that could be one way of doing it. Okay, I think you know the best. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's move on to our lecture. Um. So, can you see my PowerPoint screen? Uh? Yes. Okay. So, uh, just recall where we stopped last week. Uh, last week, we actually stopped on this slide where I where we actually arrived at the equation of the um, double side band full carrier. Um, let me show you. Where is it? The double side band full carrier. Um, which is this one over here. Okay, wait now. Okay.
Okay. Um, so the, in this equation, we have the, um, again, for double side band full carrier, we have the lower side band. We have the upper side band as usual. That's why it's called double side band. And uh, the, in the signal itself, we also send the carrier along. All right, so we add in the carrier. So therefore, uh, it's called double side band. Full carrier, full carrier meaning the entire carrier, yeah. Um, and then we also introduce the concept of uh, degree of modulation or modulation index, which is called uh, VM over VC. All right, VM over VC, which is uh, the peak uh, modulating signal amplitude divided by the peak carrier amplitude. That will give you the modulation index for a double side band uh, full carrier signal. All right. Then uh, now, the as far as the modulation index is concerned, all right, there there are conditions for uh, the value, all right. So for proper demodulation or recovery of a double sideband full carrier signal, um, the modulation index must be less than one. Okay, the highest value you can have is one. Yeah. But a lot of times, uh, we don't actually use uh, one because uh, noise again could uh, affect our signal. Um, so um, as far as uh, modulation index value less than one, what that means is uh, our VM must always be less than VC. All right, which is this one here. VM must be less than VC. So what happens if the modulating uh, signal amplitude is higher. All right, so if you look at this three waveform here, the last one where the modulation index is more than one, which uh, indicate that our modulating uh, or VM is more than VC, then you can see that our signal, all right, at this portion, all right, when we recover the signal later on, uh, you see that this portion will be distorted here, all right? Whereas for modulation index 0.5 or 1, we can still see the entire sinusoidal signal. All right. So the problem is when the modulation index is more than 1, we lost the uh, sum of the content in the uh, original modulating signal amplitude. OK, um, where does this come about? Actually, I want to show you how we get this. I think to do this, I may have to go to. Uh, full screen. Let me see. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Let me. Okay, so now um, you might be wondering, you know, how do I get that waveform when MA is equal to 0 0.5? How do I get that waveform when MA is equal to 1? How do I get that waveform? All right, so let's... Um, okay, let's get back the double side band carrier signal equation. All right, the equation is VAMT is equal to um, cosine of omega CT BC plus VM cosine omega MT. All right, this is the, to actually um, Sketch, so actually sketch the double side band uh, full carrier AM signal is easier to make use of this equation. All right, so from this equation, um, let's say, let's say our waveform, uh, this is our modulating signal, right? Our modulating signal, the uh, VM, the small VMT actually is VM uh, cos omega MT, all right? So if you actually draw the waveform, all right, let's see. A waveform, a cosine waveform will be like uh, like this, isn't it? This will be the cosine waveform for um, our message. Right, now, um, if, all right, um, 
if our modulation index is 0 0.5, all right, that means Vm over Vc is 0 0.5, right? So what is our Vc? Our Vc is actually two times Vm, isn't it? Okay, let me put down, this is Vm and uh, this is minus Vm. All right, and then if you look at the um, the double side band full carrier equation, uh, what we have done um, to the AM signal as compared to the original modulating signal here is we add the DC shift here of amount this of uh, this VC amount. All right, there's a DC shift of VC here. Okay. So as far as the, uh, it, and then this, this whole thing, the sum of these two will be multiplied by the uh, carrier signal. All right. So the carrier signal, basically what it means is that uh, you have a lot of uh, oscillating or the carrier within the uh, envelope here. The envelope will still take the form of the um, modulating signal. All right. So what that means is um, our, our our message, uh, our AM signal basically will have a um, um I got something. What is happening on the other side? Um, at the moment, I can't, I can't view the, the uh, what do you call that, the chat box at the moment. Uh, if there's anything, then you just uh, let me know because I keep hearing a lot of uh, thing on my ear. All right, so uh, what we have now is um, I have, um, so where is, how does my this one look like? Okay. So you can see now, um, I will have a shift, all right? I will have a shift here. So my VM, the original message, uh, I plus VC. So now with MA equals to 0 0.5, my VC is 2 VM, all right? That means my this waveform, the baseband signal here will be shifted by uh, 2 VM. It will have a DC shift of 2 VM, all right? So what that means is, I have two VM here. All right. So my DC waveform or my message will actually will be shifted by an amount of two VM. All right. Uh, miss. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid that your slide is a bit lag because we still on the double side band full carrier page. You cannot see my blank page? Ah? I cannot. You cannot see your blank page. I oh. think you maybe uh, show the tab, lah, not show the entire screen. Uh, I show my entire screen, though. You still only see my tab. Ah? Okay, then my, let me try again. Um... Alright, so let me okay, what should I do here? Okay, I add one slide here. Okay, so can you see my, uh, this one now? This is my slide, right? So I'm gonna move on to a blank slide where I can show you how I got the waveform. Can. Can, miss. Okay. So now let me, let me start the world again there. Um, Actually, when I come in here, let me see. Huh? Uh, 
so I have a problem I can't draw. Let me see. Okay, I think I better show the screen you said then. Um, no, I can't. Give me a moment. Okay, can you see my blank screen now? Can. Can I? Okay. Mm. So now uh, let's let's get back our equation for double side band full carrier, which means uh, V A M T is equals to cos omega C T V C plus um E M cos omega M T. All right. So this is uh, where actually this V M cos omega M T. Miss, miss. Yeah. Are you writing at the chapter three amplitude modulation version two slide twenty one? Yes, correct. But we see nothing like It's a blank slide here. So far you cannot see ah. I can see a blank slide oh. Huh? You cannot see my 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 writing on it, ah? Cannot, uh, I don't know why, uh. Strange. Okay, let me see. Let me try again. Um, it's weird. Because that's why I try to put in a blank screen. Uh, blank screen you cannot watch. Um. Let me see. Mm. Okay, so now you can see the double side band full carrier slide, right? can see okay um so now let me write something on my blank slide and see whether you can see anything if you cannot then i have to think of other way okay can you see what i've written no mm. something is wrong Okay, um, let's, okay, let's try this. Can you see what I've written now? Cannot. Huh? Still cannot see anything. Ah? Okay. I'm sharing my screen. You still cannot see. Let me stop again. Uh, maybe I share my entire screen. You see?
All right. So now you can see my uh the slide number twenty, right? Yes. Okay. Um. So I'm trying to write on slide number twenty one and see whether you can see anything or not. Can you see now? Can see now. Oh, okay. Good. Can see already. Okay. See already. Okay. Thanks for the feedback. So for double side band full carrier, let's bring out the equation. Uh, v A M T is equal to cos omega C T V C plus uh, V M cos omega M T. All right. Where this V M cos omega M T is our message. Okay. We use a very simple message, which is just a cosine waveform. Uh, that's our V M T. All right, so if I were to draw the uh, waveform of a cosine wave, all right, the cosine wave basically the waveform will look like this, isn't it? All right, where the amplitude is Vm, all right, um, from Vm to minus Vm, and this is zero. Okay, so this is my Vmt. Okay, uh, Right, so you can see that when we perform a double sideband full carrier modulation, basically we add a we say add a DC signal to our uh, modulating signal. All right, this is DC and this is my this is my VMT. Uh. This is a message signal. All right, and this is a DC offset that I actually add to my uh, message signal before I multiply it with this uh, uh, cos omega CT. All right, which is the carrier. So what actually happened uh, when we add DC shift to our cosine wave? So now it depends on how much DC is added, isn't it? Now let's say our MA is equal to 0 0.5, which is the first example. So that means VM over VC is equal to 0 0.5, and that means my VC is 2 times VM. All right. So that means uh, I actually add a DC offset of 2 VM to my message signal, all right, before I multiply with the carrier, all right. So when we draw, okay, and not what, how we get that uh, waveform is basically this way. We add a DC offset. Okay, uh, this is, again, this is T, yeah? we are in time domain, all right, this is T. And this is my VAMT, which is the double sideband full carrier signal. So what I've done is uh, now I add I add two VM to my modulating signal. So that means my this my this uh, cosine wave is now shifted upwards by two VM. All right, VM plus two VM will give me three VM. Zero will give me uh, two VM. Right. So that means I have here three VM. All right, and then I have uh, and it's center at two v is center at two vm. All right, and then the lowest is vm. So that means my signal is going to go like this. The envelope, the envelope is going to look like this. Okay, it's shifted by uh, two vm upwards, and then the um. As far as the, um, this is the envelope for the positive side. For double sideband full carrier, uh, it's very similar to double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. It's in the sense that uh, to get, uh, you also need to do a mirror uh, reflection around the horizontal axis that will give you the, the full signal. All right, so what you do is uh, again, uh, it's the mirror reflection uh, along the, horizontal axis so that is your um, envelope then the cosine signal all right the high frequency is just uh, the one that you have in between okay so this is uh, the the, the double side band full carrier uh, signal waveform when we modulate at the modulation index of 0 0.5. Okay, and uh, when we use a modulation index of 1, all right, that means my Vm is over Vc is 1, 
and that means my VC is equals to VM. All right, so when my VC is equals to VM, so I added again a DC offset of VM to my modulating signal over here. All right, so everything shifted by amount of uh, VM. So the waveform is going to look like. This is T, so everything shifted from uh, the zero axis to Vm, so everything shifted upwards. Then the minus Vm will become zero, All right? The plus Vm will become two Vm, so it has a peak at two Vm. All right, so I have this. Again, this one will be the envelope. All right, amplitude modulation uh, is the envelope is going to follow the envelope of the carrier will follow the amplitude of the um, modulating signal. So again, uh, at the negative uh, side, we have the mirror reflection. So this will be um, all right. Then you fill in the carrier signal. It's just a sketch, huh? All right, the carrier signal here. Okay, so this is when your MA is equal to one. Uh, what happened when your M, your modulation index is 1.5? That means VM over VC will be 1.5. That means VC will be VM over 1.5 which is about 0 0.67 Vm. All right, that means we're going to shift the entire, uh, again, the modulating signal by a uh, DC amount of 0 0.67 Vm. So this is my VAMT. And this is my VAMT. All right, uh, now one zero point six seven five, then be a six seven, so that become one point six seven VM. All right, so minus VM plus zero point six seven VM, I get minus zero point three three VM, right? So, uh, the zero now will be shifted to zero point six seven VM. All right, so what you get is uh, here. Okay, this is the positive half. And then for the negative half, 1.67, then I have uh, minus 1.67. Okay, so that will be, uh, so again, it will go like that. Okay. No, not that much, sorry. It will be one point. Zero point three three. So just a bit up here. You know. So it's just a bit less than that. So that is our envelope for the negative part of it. Then what you have is just fill in the carrier frequency. Okay, the carrier will be the higher fre high frequency signal that make the envelope. Okay, so that is our uh, how we actually get uh, the waveform. So the problem is here, all right. When we have when we have our modulation index uh, greater than one, the problem is here. All right, our problem is here. This part here. Okay, if you look at the envelope now, the positive side, the envelope is like this. 
Okay. And this will, this will, when we recover the message later on, a uh, double sideband full carrier uh, message recovery normally use uh, envelope detector or rectifier circuit. All right. Envelope detector or rectifier circuit, which I explain in detail later on, is basically is to take the envelope of the positive axis. All right. On the, uh, on the positive side of the uh, amplitude. So what will happen is uh, the message, which is originally like this, cosine wave, will actually become this shape. All right. So when we recover, we're going to recover this instead of the cosine wave. But when the modulation index is uh, 0.5 or 1, right, we can still recover the, the sinusoidal wave as it is. All right, we can still recover the sinusoidal wave as it is. Uh, MA equals to 1, a bit risky. La. If noise is added here, then uh, this part may, may be corrupted. Yeah. So therefore, uh, we always use a modulation index uh, less than 1. Okay, is that clear? How we get that waveform? Yeah, uh, you want to write down or copy down? Um, as an extension, uh, extension of this discussion, um, let's take a look at the double sideband full carrier signal. Uh, no, double sideband suppressed carrier signal, just for comparison. All right, double sideband suppressed carrier signal, what we do is, we don't add DC, isn't it? we straight away multiply, right? We straight away multiply, and uh, therefore, that means uh, VC is not added, all right? No DC shift. All right? So if we don't do DC shift, then our our modulated signal is going to look like this. Same as the one in the lecture note I've shown you in your slides. The VAMT um, is going to look like, uh, so I'm going to have that. No DC shift. So my my double side band suppressed carrier signal is gonna look like this. All right, same as the one that I show in the lecture notes. My double side band suppressed carrier signal, the envelope is gonna look like this. So therefore, you can see that the double side band suppressed carrier signal, we, we can only use uh, um synchronous detection all right we can never we can never use envelope if we use envelope detection all right you'll see that uh, we can never recover our sinusoidal signal yeah if you only take the positive half of the amplitude um there is just a further discussion now so that you can compare compare the waveform of a double-sided suppressed carrier signal with the waveform of a double side band full carrier signal uh, with different modulation index values. Okay, and uh, okay. Double side band suppressed carrier signal don't no DC shift. And what does that mean actually? When there is no DC shift, that means uh, our VC is as far as the addition is concerned, our VC is actually equal to zero, right? In this case, as far as this equation is concerned, our VC is zero. What does VC is zero mean? That means VM over zero, VM over VC, or modulation index, you see VM over VC. Uh, so VM over zero will give you infinity. All right. So in other words, uh, the double side band suppressed carrier modulation technique is actually a, a different version of double side band full carrier uh, modulation technique with modulation index being infinity. That's all. All right. So that is for... Um, 
some explanation on the waveform, uh, how we got that waveform. Okay, and hopefully with this, uh, you should be able to do the tutorial question. Okay, yeah. Uh. Hello. Okay. Can you copy down or you already uh, take a screenshot? Have you? Done your screenshot? Yes, miss. Yes. Okay, good. So let's move on to, uh, again, look at the, let's look at the double sideband uh, full carrier frequency spectrum. Okay, let's bring back the equation again. So always refer uh, to back to your equation. Uh. So when you have your equation, uh, everything is uh, easily um, understood. Okay, now the double sideband full carrier, um, now in that equation of the um, signal, the unmodulated signal, we have a carrier here. That means in the um, frequency spectrum, we will have a, we will have a component at the carrier frequency. <laughs> All right, so the frequency spectrum will have a component or have an impulse at the carrier frequency. All right, and uh, the diagram that I'm showing you here, basically I, I merge the negative frequency to positive frequency. Yeah, yeah. So if you actually um, draw it across uh, the negative as well as positive, then your amplitude you need to divide by two, all right? Here I merge because the letter make it easy for me to calculate power, all right? Um, you can also split them and then when you calculate power, you add both powers, uh, yeah? So now uh, for double sideband full carrier uh, with single frequency FM, if the signal is only of single frequency, uh, the modulating signal frequency being FM, then again, uh, you are going to have two sidebands, right? Um, one at uh, upper sideband at uh, FC plus FM, lower sideband at FC minus FM. All right, bandwidth again is the same, still two FM, same as a double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. And then the amplitude now, um, because I merge, so the amplitude now is uh, VC. All right, and then the amplitude for the sidebands will be VM over 2. All right, the amplitude is VM over 2, and it's because I merge. If you split, then you'll be VM over 4. All right, and uh, again, if I were to rewrite VM um, with uh, MAVC, all right, VM is related to uh, the modulation index by uh, MAVC. Uh, Right, recall our equation for uh, modulation index is uh, V modulation index is Vm over Vc. Yeah, we must always remember uh, the modulation index for uh, amplitude modulation. This is a very simple equation to remember. Um, so if I were to rewrite uh, in the form of uh, modulation index, so the amplitude basically will be MAVC over two. Again, this is because I merged the positive and negative frequency. All right, I'm just taking the um, amplitude from the equation here. Okay, and that is for single frequency. Uh, what happens if my message signal or my baseband signal has uh, a range of frequencies? All right, which is very common as far as uh, real life signal is concerned. For real life signals, normally uh, we have a uh, uh, sets of equations. So the uh, in this example, my baseband signal has a frequency that uh, as low as F1 and the highest is F2. All right, the highest frequency components that are available in my baseband signal is F2. So if you were to modulate uh, perform modulation, then uh, as far as the double sideband full carrier frequency spectrum is concerned, same thing, you are going to have a lower sideband as well as upper sideband, okay? And uh, you also have a component at the carrier frequency, all right? And um, what happened to the bandwidth? All right, because this is a double sideband, um, therefore the bandwidth is 
um, the highest frequency in the upper sideband minus the lowest frequency in the uh, lower sideband. Okay, so this is my actual signal bandwidth from here to here. Oh, from here to here. So this will give me my bandwidth. All right, and what is the bandwidth? The bandwidth is 2F2. All right, where F2 is the highest frequency component in my baseband signal. Okay. Okay, this slide uh, actually show you the relationship between the time domain and the frequency domain representation of our, uh, our signal here. So uh, looking at the first one here, which is our modulating signal, is of a very low frequency. All right, our carrier, uh, again, is of high frequency. All right, when the waveform are closer to each other, that means it's a higher frequency. Yeah? The one that is further apart with the longer uh, period, then it's a low frequency. Yeah? So what we have uh, in the um, double sideband full carrier signal, Basically, you have the carrier component, all right? You have the, now this is the lower sideband, all right? Lower sideband, uh, of course, the amplitude is lower, all right? Relatively low as compared, let's refer back to our equation here, all right? The amplitude is relatively low. And then the frequency, of course, uh, is uh, lower than uh, carrier frequency, but higher than the modulating signal frequency, uh, right? So it's in between. So you have this uh, spectrum over here. All right, this is the frequency spectrum. Um, then we have, um, again, the upper side band where the amplitude is lower also because of VM over two or MAVC over two, uh, but the frequency is higher than the carrier frequency because of FC plus FM. All right, so that's why you have a, a component here as well at the, uh, uh, in pulse here in the frequency spectrum. All right, and that gives us all right combination of uh, this and this and this. All right, we give us a resultant waveform uh, of this one here. Okay, this is the AM wave. Okay, so AM wave uh, representation in time domain basically it will look like this. Uh. So the envelope basically will follow the uh, amplitude of the modulating signal. That is the envelope here. All right, the envelope here. Um, and then the, the, the carrier or the, the waveform shape here, the repetitive uh, waveform within the envelope is basically uh, the carrier frequency inside. Okay, or maybe it's changing as well. Uh. So again, uh, as far as sketch is concerned, uh, you just have to sketch something of a uh, higher frequency and then the, the amplitude of uh, each oscillation actually uh, will, will actually drop out the um, amplitude of the uh, modulating signal. Okay, you actually follow uh, the amplitude of the modulating signal here. So that is for... Um, Double side band full carrier AM modulation. Okay. Um, generation of double side band full carrier signal. Okay. Um, shall we take a break here? It's almost 12. Yeah, break. Yeah, good. Um, let's take a five minutes break and then we come back at 12.05. Is that okay? Okay. All right. See you later.
Okay, are we all back here? Are we? Oh, keep quiet, Anil. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank yes. you for responding. Okay, now let's uh, move on to the next part of our lecture that talk on the um, generation. Right. So, well, can you see my screen? Uh? Yes. I? All right. So, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how the double side band full carrier signal can be generated. Uh, as far as the generation is concerned, the double side band full carrier signal generation is very much similar to double side band suppressed carrier. The only difference is uh, we have a uh, uh, addition of a carrier component. All right, so going back to the equation, okay, we actually got two equations uh, as for the um, for the double side band full carrier signal. So the first equation that you can use, all right, is this one here, where we actually multiply our message signal with the cosine uh, omega c. All right, omega c is a uh, um, is the carrier frequency. So if we and then we add the full carrier here, which is a VC cos omega CT. All right. So therefore the generation is uh you can represent it with this diagram, which is uh VMT. All right, which one is VMT? This is your VMT. Okay, multiply with cos omega CT. So this is this is very much similar to the double side band suppressed carrier signal generation, isn't it? We just multiply the modulating signal with the carrier signal. And after that, uh, we add our um, carrier, so can carrier component, all right, which is a complete carrier component uh, with the amplitude VC. All right, this one, the amplitude is one. Over here, the amplitude is one, but over here, the amplitude is VC, yeah? Or the simpler way is uh, using the second equation. All right, we have our second equation that say it, uh, that, uh, give us this. Okay, if you actually factorize the common terms in this equation, what you're going to get is you're going to get cos omega ct. This is a common component. All right, then you're going to have um, vm cos omega mt plus vc. All right, so if you use the second equation, so that means what you need to have is again your VMT, which is a message signal. All right, you first add you first add a DC. All right, DC that uh, amount to VC. All right, uh, DC shift provide a DC shift of uh, amplitude VC to the message signal before you actually multiply. Multiply with cos and maga ct. So you can also generate your uh, double sideband uh, full carrier signal this way. Okay, this is for double sideband full carrier. So this uh, look will look slightly different uh, from the the one that we uh, implement using the first equation. Okay. Um. Well, if you can, I don't expect you to memorize. I got too many things to memorize at the moment. But uh, as long as you uh, know the equation well, you can always play with it, and then you can uh, come up with different way of uh, generating the signal. Okay. Um. Uh, miss. Yeah. We cannot see the writing. Huh? You cannot see my writing. Why? Ah. Uh? That's very weird. Okay, let me stop sharing uh, this card. 
Okay, let's. But just now when I highlight, you could see, right? Can you see my highlighter also? Ah? Cannot. Cannot. Oh. Okay. Please, you try draw the papers. Okay, now I, I try. Ah. Um, all right, so how to generate the double side band full carrier? It's very similar to double side band suppressed carrier. Meaning, I just multiply the incoming message with the um, carrier. All right, and this carrier has the amplitude of one. Can you see? Uh? Can you see my marking with pen? Yes, miss. Yes. Okay, now can you? All right. Um, then this is for this part. Okay, this is my VMT. All right, this is my VMT. So I multiply my message signal with uh, the carrier signal with the amplitude one first. Then after that, I add my full carrier component. All right, full carrier component will have an amplitude of uh, VM, uh, VC here. All right, so I add here. So this is the addition sign. And uh, this will give me the uh, double sideband full carrier signal. All right, double sideband full carrier signal. So another way of uh, generating double sideband full carrier signal is by um, getting a different equation here from the, the general equation for double sideband full carrier. So again, um, starting with this general equation, if I factorize my common term, which is uh, cos omega ct, can you see my writing? Uh? I think can really, right? Yes. Yeah, with um, my, now I keep it as VMT. Yeah. All right, plus VC. Then uh, you can see that. So instead of uh, multiplying first, now I can actually add first. All right. So what I can do now is I do the addition first. So now my VMT again, uh, I add, I add the DC shift. All right, the DC shift, how much? VC, the value is VC. And then after that, I multiply with the cosine omega CT. Okay, I multiply with the carrier signal of amplitude one. All right, again, that will give me VAMT. Okay, again, this will give you the double side band full carrier signal. Okay. So as far as double side band suppressed carrier signal is only the first part. Lah. This will give you double side band full carrier signal. Right? With the, uh, double side band suppressed carrier signal, sorry. Double side band suppressed carrier signal. All right, because we never add, uh, we never send the DC signal along. So to send the DC signal, uh, the carrier signal along, then we have to uh, add the carrier component later. So in this form, it is easy to uh, recognize it or to see the similarity between uh, double sideband full carrier and double sideband suppressed carrier because both involve uh, multiplying the modulating signal with the carrier signal. So in this case here, we actually multiply. Yeah, and uh, in the second way of uh, double sideband full carrier generation, so instead of performing uh, multiplication, we actually First, we actually do the addition first. All right, we add the DC shift first before we multiply. Okay. Um, both ways will generate the same uh, double side band full carrier signal. Okay, can I move on? Yes, please continue. Copying, huh? okay, good.
Okay, finish copying. Yes. Finish. All right, so now, uh, let me ask you, which, which way is easier? Which way of generating a double side band full carrier uh, signal is easier? The one on the left or the one on the right? Right. Yeah, the one on the right, isn't it? Yeah, because all you need is to add the DC. This is a component which is very easy. And then you just multiply with the uh, cosine wave uh, with the amplitude of one, all right? The one on the left, uh, basically you multiply this step, uh, it's not difficult. But then the addition part, you have to, uh, you have to actually multiply the cosine wave of amplitude one now with the uh, amplitude with the amount of VC before you add. All right, so this one, uh, this step is a bit uh, more complex uh, as compared to the one on the right. Okay, so now if I were to ask you, uh, suggest two way of uh, generating a double side band full carrier signal, you know how to answer, right? Yes, miss. Okay, good. So let's move on. Um, so I won't go into a detailed circuit on how to actually do it because the uh, addition of a DC is very, very much easier. And then the multiplication, again, we talk about it when uh, we discuss double sideband suppressed carrier. So let's talk about how to recover the double sideband full carrier signal. All right, as far as the double sideband full carrier signal is concerned, there are two ways to recover the uh, message signal. So the... The first way or first method uh, is actually using uh, synchronous detection. All right, synchronous detection is also called coherent detection. All right, coherent detection. So as the word synchronous uh, imply, all right, this involves uh, multiplying the incoming signal with the carrier signal that has uh, same frequency and same phase as the carrier signal being used at the transmitter. All right, demodulation basically take place at the receiver. Yeah. So as then that what that will give us is again uh um after we multiply the same thing we're going to get um some high frequency component as well as the baseband signal. Okay um what we're gonna get here let's go through some maths again so let's say this is yt all right, what is yt going to be? Okay, um, the double side band full carrier signal. Okay, VAMT is, uh, VAMT is, uh, again, uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use uh, this one here. VC plus uh, VMT. All right, so that means when I multiply with cos omega ct, so my yt will be um, cos omega ct multiply with vamt, right? So cos omega ct multiply with cos omega ct, I'm going to get cos square omega ct. All right, so this is just vc plus vmt. All right, so what is cos square omega ct? Uh, using trigger identity again, uh, cos square omega ct will give you half of, half of one minus cos two omega ct. All right, and then multiply with vc plus uh, vmt. All right, so we're gonna get this uh, at, uh, after the multiplier. Okay, so if I were to expand this a little bit, uh, we're going to get half of um, VC plus VMT 
Okay, and then I'm going to get half of, oh, this is minus. So again, if I were to multiply this one, let's go through the maths a bit. Uh, if I were to multiply, perform cost multiplication, then I'm going to get half of this. And then um, multiply that entire thing. And then I'm going to have, this is minus, sorry, I have to go to erase the minus. Okay, so I'm going to get is minus uh, half of, um, here in this case, cos 2 omega ct multiply with vc plus vmt. Yeah? So you can see uh, from here, this actually will be my baseband signal here with the offset baseband signal uh, plus offset plus DC offset. All right. Where else the second part here? Okay, this second part here, right, will give me some high frequency component. Right, at uh, what, 2 omega C and then uh, two omega C minus omega M and also two omega C plus omega M, right? So you can see this uh, this second set of component uh, are the high frequency component, right? The baseband signal, the message signal is actually here already after my multiply, okay? I actually have my baseband signal here already. So all I need to do is, uh, if I were to use synchronous detection, then, uh, by passing YT through a low pass filter, all right, by passing it through a low pass filter, I can actually get uh, here, which is half of uh, VC plus my VMT, right? Half of VC plus VMT. So it's offset, uh, the, there's a DC offset of VC. So what do I need to do next is just to block the DC, which is VC here. I block this, this, use a DC blocker to block DC. And what I get here is a half of my message signal. All right, half of uh, MT, which is a message signal, which is my VMT. Uh. Yes, let's use back the same uh, symbol here, which is VMT. All right, so uh, as far as double sideband full carrier um, recovery is concerned, method one, okay. Method one can give us the um, original message back. All right. Again, because we are using synchronous detection here, uh, the same problem that uh, have, that we face in the synchronous detection of double sideband uh, suppressed carrier signal will occur here as well. Okay, the same problem. What's the problem? The problem is uh, it's hard to maintain. All right, it's hard to maintain uh, or to ensure that the, the, the frequency as well as the phase of the signal, um, the carrier signal used at the receiver uh, is exactly the same as the one uh, that we use at the transmitter. Okay, or the one that actually arrive here after the signal is distorted, the carrier signal is distorted and maybe phase shifted. So we have the same problem if we use a synchronous detection, all right? So it doesn't really help us here if we, uh, um, if we, we use a synchronous detection to uh, recover double sideband full carrier signal, all right? Again, remember when we use double sideband full carrier uh, modulation technique, we add, uh, we add the carrier signal, all right? And uh, later I'm gonna talk about the power is when we add the carrier signal, a lot of the uh, signal power actually is used to carry the carrier signal. You know, this actually is, is uh, kind of a 
um, something that is not really uh, as far as power efficiency is concerned is is very low. Okay, so as far as uh, double sideband full carrier signal is concerned, the more the more common way or the more, more practical way of uh, of uh, recovering the message signal is by using the rectifier uh, as well as uh, envelope detector. Okay, do you want to uh, write this down on your lecture notes or on the piece of paper before I move on? Sometimes when I write, yeah. Uh, okay, let's check that now. Everything's correct. Shall I move on? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what, uh, what is the rectifier method? Okay. Rectifier, rectifier, the word comes from rectification. Uh, the word rectification, uh, as well as uh, in electronics, it means uh, we only take the positive parts of a signal. All right. So, therefore, if you look at this diagram here, um, rectifier detection is easier to actually understand uh, from diagram. Okay, uh, let's go through the diagram first. So, we have our AM signal coming in. So, this is the signal in its original form. Okay, so here it used... Uh, that's a problem. Uh, I take this from the books and then the books also not very consistent in the naming of the... Uh, symbol. So let me change it a bit. So this is uh, instead of uh, okay, instead of a small letter A, it's actually a big letter A la. Okay, where this A actually is the same as the VC that I was talking about. So we have a double sideband full carrier signal coming in here. <coughs> All right. Um. Rectifier, what is a rectifier? Uh, what is the com best component to be used as a rectifier? Diode, isn't it? You actually learn in your year one basic electronics. So we use a diode to allow only the positive uh, part of the signal to pass. All right, so only up, uh, allow the positive uh, amplitude part of the signal to pass. So therefore, after the diode, all right, uh, the the double sideband full carrier waveform will be chopped la, so that the only the negative side is um, appearing at the output uh, of the, uh, the other side of the diode while the negative part has been chopped off. La. Okay, and, uh, and you can see now the positive part of the uh, signal will still have the envelope of our original message, right, which is this one here. All right, so, and then we have the high frequency carrier component here. All right, so again, how to remove high frequency component from our um, the signal that we have? The easiest way is just use a low pass filter. All right, low pass filter will allow the low frequency uh, component of a uh, signal to pass through while blocking the high frequency carrier. All right, so therefore, what you're going to have after the low pass filter is just the um this one here the envelope only the envelope of the um, signal remain after the low pass filter and this one um remember remember the double sideband full carrier signal has dc offset okay so we have a dc offset here so how to remove dc offset from our the signal here so the easiest way to remove the dc offset is by using a capacitor Right, capacitor will block DC, isn't it, and allow AC to pass. So by you by the use of a capacitor, then we can block or remove the DC component that we added at the uh, modulation from the um, message that we want to recover here. All right. So after the capacitor, then you recover your message signal here. This is your message signal. All right, and then of course the amplitude is uh, reduced by a factor of pi. Uh. 
Yeah, but the shape of the waveform still remain. Yeah. So how, how do we actually recover the original amplitude of our message since it's already reduced by a factor of pi? See, I have a question here. How to increase the magnitude of uh, our message that we recover? Hello? How? The amplitude of my signal is too low. I want to boost it back to MT. So what do I do? Uh, and what? Say again, say again. How to how to increase the amplitude? How to change from one over pi and t to mt? How do I do it? Multiply by pi. Multiply by pi. How do I multiply by pi? Instead of using multiplier, what is the easier what's the easier way of doing it? Yeah, multiply instead of using a multiplier, what kind of circuit can we uh amplifier? Yeah, exactly. Just use the amplifier. All right, use the amplifier with a gain pi, and that will recover the uh, original amplitude of your uh, message. Okay. And um, on the right side of this slide, basically show you some mathematical uh, treatment of uh, the recovery process. Okay, so basically, uh, if you look at the rectifier output here, which is this one over here, all right, is actually very similar to uh, having the uh, AM signal uh, multiplied with the pulse strain. All right. And then uh, power strain, if you represent the power strain in this Fourier series, the power strain omega t basically can be written in this form. Yeah, I believe you have learned this in your previous course. Um, again, this is the, uh, you have a DC plus the, uh, all the odd harmonics, right? So the halfway rectifier output basically can be written as the incoming, the double sideband full carrier signal multiply with the power strain, okay? Which only have uh, amplitude on the positive side. Yeah. So perform the multiplication uh, and then bring in the bring in the full expression in Fourier series, you're gonna have this, all right? Then perform the multiplication, they say I do, I just multiply cos omega c with half, then I get this, half cos omega c. Cos omega c uh, multiply with the second term here, which is the first harmonic of the um, house. Then I get two over pi cos square omega c, and also um, multiply with the third harmonics. Right, I'm going to get what uh, cos three omega c multiply with cos omega c. I get cos uh, two omega c and also four omega c. Right, so the list go on. All right, I won't go into details. Um, but then if you collect the terms, right? If you collect the terms, then uh, you're going to get um, 2 over pi here. All right, uh, multiply with um, half. And uh, how where did this half come from? This half come from converting cos square omega c to uh, cos 2 omega c. All right, cos square omega c. And this is uh, what half of uh, one minus cos two omega c. All right, it come from here. So this is where the half come from, and uh, this is where it comes. This one is the one that gives rise to this one here. Okay, and also we have some two omega c that uh, as a result of uh, multiplication between this and this as well. Right, but nevertheless, we are not interested in all the high frequency component because we're going to pass it through a low pass filter. All right, we're going to pass it through a low pass filter. 
So uh, that will remove all the high frequency component and that leave us with the baseband um, modulating signal plus the DC offset. All right, where the, again, this is how uh, the amplitude is uh, divided by pi. Okay, where does the pi come from? The pi come from here, all right, which is the power strain amplitude. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. So basically, there is a, um, again, the mathematical uh, explanation on uh, how we actually manage to recover the uh, message signal from the double sideband full carrier signal using a rectifier detector. All right, so a rectifier detector basically consists of a diode. All right, the main component is a diode, a low pass filter, and also a capacitor, which is the DC blocker. This is your DC blocker. All right, so this diode basically is your rectifier. So very, very simple components are being used here. All right, so because we use very uh, low pass filter, basically is what is just a series of RC circuits, right? RC circuits can, can actually uh, be used to construct low pass filter. Okay, so that is for rectifier. Can I move on or you need to take note? Uh? I move on, ah. Uh. Okay, Anna. Miss. Okay. So, uh, moving on to the next part, uh, is um, envelope detector. Okay, which is uh, method number three. Envelope detector again is, is very similar to rectifier circuit. All right, in the sense that um, okay, we still make use of a diode here. Yeah, which again uh, allow only the positive uh, portion of the amplitude of the incoming AM signal to pass through. All right. So again, if you look at the waveform, uh, as far as uh, this at this point is concerned, right, only the positive half will be allowed to pass through. All right. Only the positive half will be allowed to pass through. And then uh, what we have here after, after the diode is a capacitor here, all right? So we actually make use of a RC circuit. Okay, this RC circuit's uh, purpose is to trap, okay? It's actually to trap the amplitude of the, or the envelope of the uh, AM signal, all right? So basically what will happen is uh, if you look at the AC, uh, the AM signal coming in, Right, the AM signal coming in basically is uh is this one here, okay, this high, this one here, okay, where the amplitude actually will, sh will follow the amplitude of our message signal, right? So what the RC circuit will do is, okay, during the low or uh, high to low transition of the um, AM signal, the RC will actually, well, AC is charged up when it go high, right? So when, when this carrier signal go low, all right, the AC will slowly decay. I mean, the capacitor will actually decay, right? The capacitor will decay and then depend on the RC value that you choose, all right? Then um, it, you have to choose a value in such a way that it decays slower or it decays slow uh, as compared to the, um, the speed where the carrier signal um, reduce. Then if the decay is slow enough, 
then uh, by the next time the, the input signal or the carrier signal go up again, all right, it will actually be charged up. So which is this part here. All right. Then when your carrier signal drop for drop again in the next uh, cycle, your your capacitor again will be discharged. All right, it will be discharged. And then by the time the carrier signal go up again, it will be charged up. All right. So you can see that the uh, at this point here, at this point here, all right, what you have is the um the ripper signal. I will say ripper. All right, so what you have here basically is a ripper that contain the um that is still have show you the envelope of the original signal. All right, but then uh, of course with some ripper here. Okay, so the amount of ripper actually depend on the RC value. Okay, so your RC again for this kind of circuit, your RC value must be chosen carefully. All right, so that uh yeah, it must fulfill this condition here. All right, so that the uh, R, your RC value is very much larger than uh, one omega, a uh, one over one over omega c, where omega c is a carrier frequency. All right, so that means your RC constant must be bigger than the entire period of the uh, carrier uh, carrier signal, so that it discharges slowly. All right, it won't discharge following the following the drop of the carrier amplitude. Um, here, but then at the same time, your RC must be smaller than 1 over 2 pi b. What is 2 pi b? 2 pi b basically is the bandwidth of the bandwidth of the um, baseband signal. All right. Uh, bandwidth of the baseband signal, what that means is basically is the highest highest frequency component in the baseband signal. All right. So it has to be it has to be smaller. All right. So what why is that necessary? If it's not if it's not smaller, what that, that means is your RC, your RC decay will not be able to actually follow the envelope closely. All right. So when the envelope actually change at a higher frequency at a higher um, frequency, then your RC will not be able to track. So this is an example when your RC is too large. Okay, when your RC is too large, you won't be able to tra track the changes in the um, amplitude of the baseband signal. All right. So what have, what you're going to get here, all right, at this point, basically is at this point here, you're going to get uh, your signal like that. Okay. It contains the ripper. It still contains the ripper. So what you need to do next basically is to pass this signal through again a low pass filter. All right. So a low pass filter will remove the ripper, will remove this ripper. Okay. This ripper will be removed by low pass filter. All right, so we're going to get after the low pass filter will be a ripper free signal. So we're going to get is you're going to get uh, something like this. Uh, ripper free signal. All right. So again, if you look at this signal over here, it still contains the DC component. All right, the DC offset is still here. So what you need to do next is passing it through a DC blocker. All right, that will recover your uh, original message and key. All right, that will recover your original message and key. And what is the DC blocker? DC blocker basically is just a capacitor again. All okay. right, then what you're going to get is at this point will be 
your original message signal. Okay. Hey, actually, I have this here. Yeah. Okay. Actually, this course uh, involves a lot of signal processing. Uh. So if you did relatively well in your DSP, uh, the signal processing here, again, even though it's analog, uh, I think it's fairly straightforward. Uh, basically, make use of uh, whatever you have learned before, right? Rectifier, you learned before, right? RC circuit, you learned before, right? Filter, also, you learned before, right? Um, DC blocker, which is a capacitor, you also learn in your year one. Already. Rectifier also year one, RC circuit also year one. So nothing new here. Actually, it's just uh, applying applying the knowledge that you have learned previously into this course. But if you have written uh, what you have learned previously to your lecturer, then uh, no choice. Uh, you have to pick up again. Uh. Okay, can I continue? <laughs> Very quiet. Okay, what do I have next? I move on, huh? Yeah? So let's look at some example. Lah. I think uh, you are um, better at calculation. Right? Let's do some calculation. And so we have a carrier frequency 5 megahertz. And uh, this is my FC. FC is 5 megahertz. Peak value 5 volts. That means my VC is 5 volt. Amplitude modulated by a 4 kilohertz sine wave. That means my FM is uh, 4 kilohertz of amplitude 3 volt, that means my VM is 3 volt. All right, using double side band full carrier scheme. Determine the modulation index. All right, modulation index, we will apply your formula, which is VM over VC, and that is 3 over 5, mm -hmm. and that is 0 0.6. All right, second part, the upper and lower side band frequency. So same uh, as far as the uh, double side band full carrier is concerned, the upper side band frequency formula is the same as the uh, double side band carrier, double side band. Hey, I, I spell wrongly here, isn't it? This is double side band full carrier. Okay, double side band full carrier. So uh, it's equals to again FC plus FM and that is uh, 5 megahertz plus 5 megahertz plus 4 kilohertz. So that is 5.004 megahertz. All right. Where else? Uh, the lower sideband frequency is uh, FC minus FM. Uh, that is 5 megahertz minus 4 kilohertz. That is 4.996 megahertz. Okay. And then uh, the sideband amplitude. So the sideband amplitude, um, basically the upper sideband amplitude 
It's the same as the lower side band amplitude, isn't it? It's equal to, if you refer back to the equation, all right, if you refer back to the equation, this equation here, all right, the side band amplitude basically is Vm over 2. This is the side band amplitude then because you multiply this one with uh, this, you also multiply this one with the, this, that will be the side band amplitude. You can have Vm over 2 or it's MAVC over 2, depending on which one uh, you want to use. Uh. You can use either one. So that will be um, Vm over 2, and that will give you 3 over 2, which is 1.5. All right, or you can use uh, MAVC over 2. So because you already have your modulation index calculated, so you can just put uh, this will be 5, this will be 2, and this will be. Um, 0 0.3, also 1.5 uh, volt, uh, sorry, volt. the unit of measurement is volt. So either one will give you the same answer. Okay, so you if you if you have the notes already printed, then you can write on them. I know that is a lot convenient this way, but if you don't have the note uh, on the hard copy yet, then you write on the piece of paper. Um, well, or some of you, I think better still, you just take screenshot, <laughs> but make sure you know where to find them later. Uh, and then you copy onto your notes after you have printed it out. Or don't copy better still. You try to work it out yourself just to check your understanding. Right? If you understood already, then you can straight away work it out. So it's part of your uh, additional tutorial question. So again, this course uh, requires a lot of practice. Uh. If you practice, uh, that means uh, that will improve your understanding. Then that will be easier for you to uh, well answer the test or even the exam questions. Okay, so uh, I only have about two minutes left, so I don't want to, I think we better stop here. Do you have any questions before we stop the class? I stopped sharing, uh. you, you put everything down, right? Have you? So quiet, uh. Okay, so um, let's stop here then. Unless you have a question, then uh, you can stay back and ask. All right, for those who don't have a question, then you may leave. Uh. Okay, thank you, Miss. Yeah.